Hey everybody, welcome back. T4 recommendations as Guardians. Obviously he's an older team. Uh, Yeti, Punk, myself, catching up on some of these older, more recent meta type teams. Doing a bunch of really cool infographics um, on these, so make sure to check those out on the multiple discords that we've got. All those links are in the description below. Uh, I'm gonna flash up the sexy uh, infographic that we've put together. Um, I'd say Punk is the, the, the brain trust behind that, so full credit to him. Uh, definitely check that out if you wanna see the specifics of how that looks. Looks really good on your phone, uh, really easy to kind of reference. Uh, I'm in this video going to go through the individual uh, rankings that both Yeti and myself did along with the comments because the way this infographic works is we combine uh, those rankings into one. So obviously Yeti and I might have different opinions on things. So to get to one uniform uh, ranking, we've got to kind of combine it. And this video is to go in further depth of um, each individual ranking and provide those comments. So first, let's get to the infographic and you can check out how sexy this thing is. Bring me Wolverthor. All right, so you can kind of see the infographic here real briefly. Um, I'm going to leave this up on the screen, so if you don't care about anything else, granted, you could go get the infographic uh, on any of our discords, like I mentioned. I'll leave this on here. Uh, I'll blow it up so you can see how sexy and clear this thing is. And man, Punk did a really good job looking at this thing. One of the questions that we constantly get um, about these rankings is the damage increase rank. This is something that I've been doing for a long time. I've got a spreadsheet related to it. Uh, ultimately, what that has to really do with is where, if it's a damage-based ability or a damage-based increase for that T4, I've ranked every one of those based on the base damage and the percent increase, and that's what that is. So, and obviously there's some difficulty with adjacents and alls. So I've done a baseline at just the individual target. So when you've got those ones that hit all, like Hell is Ultimate here, it's actually even better than that because it hits so many more people. So when you see those, that's what that's focused on. So you can have an idea of what hits the hardest. It's kind of a biggest bang for your buck. So again, check out how sexy this thing is. Super sharp, really good job. We've got a little legend here at the bottom showing uh, uh, what each of these colors means. And then we've got our different uh, respective channels and discords. So anyway, let's go through the comments that both Yeti and myself have put together. All right, so before I get into the details of this, uh, we're starting at the bottom going up. Our general classifications here are essential, really good, solid, got T4s to spare, nothing else to use them on and just don't. We've recolor coded these a bit to be a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Hopefully that helps kind of uh, take that, you know, glare, blair, like bright uh, colors that we, that I used to have on these. Luckily these guys kind of showed me the light a little bit. I uh, got some better colors on there. So anyway, enough of that. Let's check at the bottom of the list here. First up, both Yeti and I agree that the worst in this full arsenal of Asgardian T4s is Loki Passive. We both rank this as just don't. Um, I, I talk about how it reduces the uh, enemy resistance by 10%. It's just pretty bad. Uh, Yeti's comment is, in general, the As Guardians don't have an issue with landing their negative effects. Uh, and while this does help out, this passive is really the worst on the team. And I agree. Uh, at 19, I've got Loki's basic. Uh, it's a 10% chance to get evade for a total of 50%. Total. Uh, could be better at maybe 75% uh, evade, then maybe I'd really look at that. Uh, piercing increase to me is kind of a meh. Um, in the 19th spot, uh, Yeti's got Sif Basic. Uh, he says, gaining deflect with the ability is really a great feature, but this ability is ranked low because it does not reward you with a T4 worthy gain. Uh, and I'd have to agree with that. And we actually have these just flipped. Uh, at the 18th spot, I've got Sif Basic pure damage increase and not enough for me to care. Uh, Loki's basic for uh, Yeti. He's talking about the increased damage. Nice, but Loki rarely assists. However, the increased chance to evade becomes something you can count on versus just hope for. 
at uh, entering the Got T Forge Despair category. Uh, we both come in at number 17 with Sif's Ultimate. My comment is an increased chain to four to five, which is up from three to four, is not bad, and the damage increases are okay. Uh, Yeti's comment is increased damage is really nice, but where the where the compounds is with the additional targets during the rebound chain attacks. It's really fun to see Sif dance around the battlefield and hit five enemies. Um, and I tend to agree with that chain aspect. That's probably the most uh, attractive feature of that T4. And again, if you've got them to spare. Uh, coming in at 16, we both agree. Sif special. Uh, my comment is it's a pure damage increase. Yeti's comment is the ability already had the critical components prior to the T4 upgrade, but the additional uh, damage is quite welcome. At 15, I've got Sif's passive. 10% uh, block chance and a 5% block amount increase didn't do much for me personally. Uh, Yeti's got Thor's basic. Uh, and you can see on the screen now, you don't see Sis passive. He'll have that much higher. So you got to think about that passive a little bit. And that's where those combined rankings really come into play. Uh, but Thor's basic, he's got it to the 15 spot. Basic hits harder, good percentage increase. At 14, we both have Heimdall's basic. My comment is pure damage increase. It's a decent one, uh, ranked 88th. Turn three use though versus Thor's basic can be a turn two. Uh, uh, Yeti's comment here is Heimdall does fair damage and 50% on a basic upgrade is quite rare, but the assist from the Asgardian ally is why it's not ranked worse. Um, at 13 is when I come in with Thor's basic, uh, a little bit higher than Yeti there. Pure damage increased, a decent one. Yeti switches over to the solid classification with Thor Special coming in at 13. His comment here is, originally I was not thrilled with this T4, but the more I use it, the more it really clears multiple enemies for him. The damage increase is good, but the extra target really scales the overall damage inflicted well. And I, I would agree, obviously, uh, that special kind of comes into play. I've got that a little bit higher ranked than that, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, this is when I jump to the solid category. Uh, at 12, we both have Heimdall's ultimate. Uh, my comment's pretty simple, pure damage increase and a decent one with a 90 uh, a damage ranked of 90 and it's hitting adjacent targets. Yeti's comment is the damage increase is welcome and due to Heimdall's passive, the increased focus will really help ensure that you successfully apply the heal block to a bunch of enemies. At 11, we both have Heimdall special. My comment is this could be higher because of the damage. Uh, guaranteed heal block removal doesn't register for me personally. I didn't like how that kind of lined up with everything else. Uh, the damage increase there is an 89 for the primary target. Yeti's comment is again, a really nice increase to damage, but the always removing heal block on the Asgardian crew is not to be underestimated. I personally love this ability due to clearing stealth in addition to the previously mentioned upgrades. Coming at the 10 spot for me personally, I've got Thor special. I've got that a few bit spots higher than um, Yeti. Just, uh, well, my comment is uh, increased chain to three from two to three. That to me is kind of, well, and I mentioned it's poor, but the damage increase is nice for a turn one ability. On a high red star Thor, this is a must. Like I said, the damage is uh, ranked there 70th and it's a primary plus the chance to chain. Uh, this is where uh, at the 10 spot, Yeti has Sif's passive, a good five spots up above mine. Um, his comment here is Sif does a great job of protecting herself, and while the increase through this ability seems small, if you consider it against every attack made against her, the persistence really adds up. Coming in at nine for myself, I've got Thor's passive, as does Yeti. However, he ups the uh, the classification to really good, whereas I have it at solid. Uh, sorry for jumping around, I was just looking at the colors there a little bit. So at not nine, we agree with the ability, just slightly different classification. My comment is damage increases just for him and only 5%. The 20% damage increase on the passive isn't bad, and that's really where I think you're looking at something nice there. Strongly consider this if you have a high red star Thor. Um, and honestly, if you have a high red star Thor, I'd almost say dump the T4s into pretty much everything with him. He's such a killer tune. Um, Yeti's comment here is the flat 5% increase in self damage is just okay, but the passive trigger increase of 20% is really astounding. This is why a big Thor is danger in Alliance War. And he's right. If you've got that big Thor, 
put it in there and I agree 100% with how he's classified it based on that. Um, absolutely. Coming in at 8, we both have Hella's Basic. My comment here is huge damage increase on an ability that gets used a lot. And this is a 17th ranked damage increase. This is huge. She uses this often um, in a, against the primary target. Uh, Yeti's comment is Hella is one of the best characters in the game and the most injured hit really shines for securing a finishing blow. We both have Loki's special coming in at 7. Uh, my comment is already 75% chance to get two enemies. The 100% chance is a nice guarantee though. This really comes into play if you're thinking about bringing Loki into Dark Dimension 3 as well. Uh, Yeti's comment here is given the two turns of defense down and knowing that two characters will guarantee to be mind control can usually secure at least 50% health removed. I agree with that, especially and if you get some of those higher targeted enemies like a DD3, you could do some damage there. Uh, this ability is something that every that everyone has to keep in mind every four turns. So coming in at six, we both have Thor's ultimate. Uh, my comment is this T4 is so close to being essential. Added 10% uh, for, for a 50% 50, uh, 50 total chance the sun is slightly low for me but the damage increased to all enemies makes it very attractive. And it is the 71st ranked damage increase of the game, but you gotta remember it's going to everybody. So it really boosts it up. This is a huge increase. Again, I've said it multiple times. If you got a strong Thor, you want a T4 basically everything. Uh, Yeti's comment for Thor's ultimate. While the increased damage while the increased damage is what I'd expect for a good character ultimate, the increased chance of stun has been quite noticeable for him. I can count on it versus hoping for it. So that's really good to see. I have not put T4s in this, clearly yet he has. So he's noticing a difference there with that 50%, which is if you are getting a good uh, uh, turnaround there, then that is huge. Coming at the five spot, I've got Hellas Passive, an additional 5% HP for As Asgardians though is okay. The war only on additional 5% damage helps make this team even stronger. Uh, the damage increase there is pretty small, but again, that's passive. Uh, Yeti's got Hella special. The two turn of disrupt has been one of the abilities that really sets Hella apart for rating in Ultimus 7. At four, I've got Hella special uh, one spot higher. Uh, two turns of disrupt it is solid, but the damage increased here is a real winner. And it comes in at the 18th ranked damage increase in the game, which is really high. Uh, Yeti's got uh, Hella's ultimate at the essential and at the four spot. This ability is the reason why Hela has ent entered her place as one of the best characters in the game. The damage is great, the death booth clear is incredible, but spreading four negative, negative effects is the clear winner. And at three, that's where I've got Hela's ultimate at, um, and I've got the jump from two to four spread of negative effects and a huge damage increase to all enemies. Yes, please! Uh, and again, that's 41st rank for everybody. Loki's ultimate is what Yeti's got in at three. The final damage increase for the mirror images is quite good, but the increased turns of stealth is really the winner here. And I totally agree with that. And I'll mention that here in a second. All right, and coming at the two spot, I've got Loki's ultimate. 40% uh, extra mirror damage uh, is kind of mad. This is about the extra turn for stealth forces people on Greg. Uh, obviously, if you know if he gets stealth, you know, but if he pops back up, it's kind of like, oh, okay, that's pretty nice. So, um, yeah, so uh, Yeti and I are one spot away from that one. Uh, Heimdall's passive is what Yeti's got at the number two spot. His, his comment here is the increased focus is okay and always a good thing to have, but the two turns of defense up is really a winner for Alliance War defense. And I obviously agree with that as I've got Heimdall's passive as number one, and I put in parentheses war. Um, again, because of that two turn defense up, um, for all as guardians and in the number one spot for Yeti, he's got hell as passive. He's got that quite a bit higher than what I have it. So there's a big difference there between us four spots in a classification, but it is a great ability. And Yeti's comment here is Hella does a lot of things very well, but this passive provides so much healing for the Asgardian team, especially for war defense damage boost. So that's the detail between how we took all of that and put it into that sexy infographic that punk made um let us know what your guys thoughts are where are we totally off base are we crazy are we right on point um you know where where do you see your differences at um we've gotten so many good feedback from so many people about our different results we wanted to put this out there too to add a 
different aspect of the conversation so you guys can see a little bit of what uh, goes into each one of our thoughts here. And then, of course, Yeti and I combine, uh, think about what we want to do with certain things. And when we've got something that kind of falls in between, we uh, find common ground and rank it as a certain, whether it's essential, really good or whatever. So hope these help you guys. Please find the infographics on any one of our discords. Again, those links are going to be in the descriptions below. Um, let us know what other T4s you guys want to see. Like I said, we got a backlog. We're going to be doing more of the more recent meta type teens. I don't see us going back to, you know, Defenders or uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or anything like that. But, uh, you know, some of these more recent ones we'll definitely look at. And obviously as these new teams, Black Order, etc., come into play, we'll definitely be jumping on those as well. So, as always, appreciate you guys stopping by. Share with your alliance mates, grandma, grandpas, aunts, uncles, friends, whoever you want. Come sub subscribe to the channel. Hammer down the like button, notification bells, all the goodness. And until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.